Practice makes perfect. Anything is possible through consistent practice. Or, to be good at anything, one must practice patiently. When Tom started baking for the first time, he burned all of his dishes. Nothing he made was good enough to be put out on the table, but he did not give up. He believed that practice makes perfect. He practiced every day until his pies and tarts were baked to perfection. Practice makes perfect. Anything is possible through consistent practice. Persuasion is better than force. Using logic or reason to convince someone is always better than using force. Sid went to buy ice cream from a van. The man was charging a higher price for it than what was printed. Instead of fighting with the ice cream man or arguing, he convinces the man with logic and reason to give him the ice cream for the actual price. Hence, we can say that persuasion is better than force. Persuasion is better than force. Using logic or reason to convince someone is always better than using force. Where there is a will, there is a way. You'll always find a way through difficult situations if you're determined. Once, Molly wore her favorite long yellow gown and took a stroll around her neighborhood. There was a large puddle on her way. She had to cross it without getting her lovely gown dirty. She thought for a moment. She lifted up her gown and waded through the puddle. She was determined to keep her dress clean, so she found a way to cross the puddle. Just as the saying goes, where there is a will, there is a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. You'll always find a way through difficult situations if you're determined. Two wrongs don't make a right. Never harm another person just because they have harmed you. Sam and Jessica were good friends. They always played together. Once when Sam was with some new friends of his, he ignored Jessica and walked away. This hurt her a lot. But after a few days, when Jessica was walking with a new friend, she stopped and introduced her friend to Sam. When Sam asked her why she didn't ignore him back, she explained that she believed two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. Never harm another person just because they have harmed you. Failing to plan is planning to fail. To succeed in any task, one must make careful plans. Peter invited all his friends to party at his home on a weekend but did not plan how he would organize it. Having left the details to the very last minute, creating a lot of confusion and spoiled the fun for Peter and his friends. This made him realize that failing to plan is planning to fail. Failing to plan is planning to fail. To succeed in any task, one must make careful plans. Too many cooks spoil the broth. If too many people are involved in a task, even a simple task can go wrong. Anne's mother asked her to clean her room and warned her that she could not go to play before it was done. Soon, her friends came to call her. Anne was suddenly inspired by an idea and asked her friends for help. 
Soon, all of them were busy helping her put things out of the way. At the end of one hour, Anne's mother entered, only to find the room even messier than before. Since her friends did not know where everything went, they had moved stuff around to make room, creating more mess. On seeing this, Anne's mother said, too many cooks spoil the broth. Too many cooks spoil the broth. If too many people are involved in a task, even a simple task can go wrong. Forewarned is forearmed. Prior knowledge of possible danger or problem prepares us better for the coming challenges. In a lake, in a faraway land, lived three fish. They loved their home and were content living there. But one day, as they were swimming around the edge of the lake, they heard two fishermen talking about fishing in that part of the lake. Since the three friends knew about the danger, they were able to escape the fisherman's net by using different ways. Thus, we can say that being forewarned is forearmed. Forewarned is forearmed. Prior knowledge of possible danger or problem prepares us better for the coming challenges. It takes two to make a quarrel. When there is a bitter argument between two people, they're both responsible for the bitter feelings they cause each other. Molly and Sid fought over who would go first while playing a game. They pointed fingers at each other while their mother intervened. They created a whole lot of unrest. Their mother finally told them, that they were both equally responsible for their quarrel. Quoting the proverb, it takes two to make a quarrel. It takes two to make a quarrel. When there is a bitter argument between two people, they're both responsible for the bitter feelings they cause each other. It takes all sorts to make a world. People vary greatly in character, taste, and abilities. Different people have different abilities. Some can sing, some can dance, some are good at studies. Each job requires special skills, be it a pilot, doctor, or a farmer. All are proficient in their own fields. It is these different abilities that make life interesting and fun. Thus, it takes all sorts to make a world. It takes all sorts to make a world. People vary greatly in character, taste, and abilities. Like father, like son. A son's character or behavior are generally expected to be like that of his father. Chris was trying to abandon his very old father as he was useless and unproductive. Upon knowing this, his young son Carl said he would do the same when he grew old. When Chris asked why, Carl replied, like father, like son implying that he would follow his father's actions and do the same when Chris grew old. This made Chris realize his errors as he understood that his son would learn from his actions and follow a similar path. Like father, like son. A son's character or behavior are generally expected to be like that of his father. Tomorrow is a new day. There is always a new day to start afresh. Lily was studying very hard for her exams, as there were only a few days left. But today, she's feeling unwell and cannot concentrate. 
her mother asks her to rest and start afresh the next day, as tomorrow is a new day. She would be fresh after the rest and would accomplish her goals. Tomorrow is a new day. There is always a new day to start afresh. Charity begins at home. A person is responsible for the welfare of their close family and friends before taking up any responsibilities for others. Jack was a very considerate boy. He always helped the people around his house and school. But he was never at home to help his sisters with the chores. Seeing this, his mother explained to him that it was a very nice thing to help people around, but you must first help your family with the work. This is because you have a responsibility to them and that charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. A person is responsible for the welfare of their close family and friends before taking up any responsibilities for others. Bitter pills may have blessed effects. Even if something is unpleasant or painful in the present, it may be helpful to you in the long run. Brad was scolded in class for his poor marks by the teacher. He felt humiliated as the whole class had heard it. But this did not deter him. Rather, it made him more determined to do better in the future and never be in this type of situation. He had learned a hard lesson and produced much better results. This shows us that bitter pills may have blessed effects. Bitter pills may have blessed effects. Even if something is unpleasant or painful in the present, it may be helpful to you in the long run. A poor workman always blames his tools. When a person does a job badly, they try to find excuses for doing so by blaming their equipment. Tom was learning to cook. He tried to make many things. But each time, something went wrong and he had to start all over again. When he was asked about it, Tom blamed the utensils and the oven for ruining his perfect cooking. Hearing him complain, his mother said, a poor workman blames his tools. A poor workman always blames his tools. When a person does a job badly, they try to find excuses for doing so by blaming their equipment. Slow but sure wins the race. Working consistently is the key to reach any goal or success. The moral of the fable, Hare and the Tortoise, tells you how the tortoise wins the race. Though the tortoise is slow, he walks at the same pace all through the race. Leads to him winning the race. The hare, who is not consistent in reaching the goal, falls behind. Slow but sure wins the race. Working consistently is the key to reach any goal or success. Never put off till tomorrow what can be done today. Always complete what you can now, as tomorrow is uncertain. Going over your lessons every day helps you score better in your exams with little effort. Eric followed this method and scored well. But his brother John spent his time watching television and playing. He left his studies till the last minute because of which he had to study a lot in the last minute and scored less. So, never put off till tomorrow what can be done today. 
Never put off till tomorrow what can be done today. Always complete what you can now, as tomorrow is uncertain. A good conscience is a soft pillow. You sleep well when you're guilty about nothing. Having scored low marks in his exams, Tom does not inform his parents about it. He feels scared of being scolded. But Tom is an honest and good boy. So he's unable to get any sleep as he feels guilty about hiding the truth from his parents. He realizes that a good conscience is a soft pillow. Thus, in the middle of the night, he wakes up his parents, shows them his grade card, and promises to do better in the next exam. Having done this, he feels better and goes to sleep. A good conscience is a soft pillow. You sleep well when you're guilty about nothing. Never say die. Never give up. Soldiers of a country defend the borders in all weathers and conditions. They could easily give up in such conditions. But they never do, and following the saying, never say die. They protect our borders with their life, day in and day out. Never say die. Never give up. A rolling stone gathers no moss. A person who does not settle in one place will not gather any wealth, status, responsibility, or commitment. Guruji was a wandering ascetic who did not stay in a place for long. As he was always on the move and had very little and simple needs, he did not attach himself to a family life nor did he accumulate any possessions. He had nothing that could tie him down. So we can say that a wandering person does not attach himself or herself to any personal obligations. Thus, a rolling stone gathers no moss. A rolling stone gathers no moss. A person who does not settle in one place will not gather any wealth, status, responsibility, or commitment. Money doesn't grow on trees. It is not easy to earn money and so it is valuable. To earn money and prosper in life, one must work hard and efficiently. This is because money doesn't grow on trees. Brian once asked his mother what it means when people said, money doesn't grow on trees. To explain what the proverb meant and how difficult it was to make money, she told him what she did every day. She went to work every day. She was paid for all her hard work at the end of the month. Now I get it why I should be careful while spending money. A lot of hard work goes into making it. Money doesn't grow on trees. It is not easy to earn money, and so it is valuable. If life deals you lemons, make lemonade. Have an optimistic attitude in the face of adversity or misfortune. Cindy was a very optimistic person. She never let any situation dampen her spirits. She was once invited to a friend's birthday bash, but she fell sick on the day of the party. She felt bad that she wouldn't be able to make it, but she decided that she will still have fun, as she planned to. She called her family into her room and played a couple of rounds of board games. When life deals you lemons, make lemonade! If life deals you lemons, make lemonade! Have an optimistic attitude in the face of adversity or misfortune. 
Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt. Being indifferent to insults. Eric and Jane had an argument over something. At one point, Eric started calling Jane names. He started saying things that were extremely hurtful. Jane remained calm and stuck to her point, despite all the repeated insults. This surprised Eric, and he asked her why she was not hurt by his words. To which she said, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt. Being indifferent to insults. Every stick has two ends. All stories have different perspectives. Mary came into the room and saw Chris holding her favorite doll. It was broken at the neck. Seeing this, Mary was very upset and blamed Chris for doing this. She did not even let him explain. Later, she realized that Chris was trying to mend the doll and that it was already broken when he came into the room. Thus, always listen to the other side of the story, as it may give you a different perspective. In other words, every stick has two ends. Every stick has two ends. All stories have different perspectives. When the cat's away, the mice play. In the absence of authority, people sometimes misbehave. Miss Caroline's class was generally well-behaved. But sometimes, when she was not around, the class would make a lot of noise and trouble each other. This would disturb the other classes, resulting in the class getting punished. Hence, we can rightly say, when the cat's away, the mice play. When the cat's away, the mice play. In the absence of authority, people sometimes misbehave. Teachers open the door, but you must enter by yourself. A teacher can teach a lesson, but it's a student's responsibility to learn what has been taught. Steve once came home with an F on his paper. When his mother read through it, she said, Teachers open the door, but you must enter by yourself. That it was Steve's responsibility to put in extra effort to understand whatever his teacher taught, and that was the only way he would learn anything. Steve started working hard, and he scored an A plus in the next exam. Teachers open the door, but you must enter by yourself. A teacher can teach a lesson, but it's a student's responsibility to learn what has been taught. Find it useful? Share so your peers will benefit as much as you did.